In this lesson, we'll just take a look at some integrative examples of select and mutate and transmute and everything. So let's use the Toyota Corolla dataset and get only the 10 columns starting from the second column. In other words, columns second to the 11th column. So we use read underscore CSV to read the file. You already know that read underscore CSV is more efficient. And then we say select toy model colon color. Now, how did I know that model to color is the second to 11th columns? I did names toy, found it out, and then used it, right? On the other hand, you can actually do it like this. In other words, with dplyr functions, when you're referring to column names, you can actually refer to column numbers, especially in select function. In any context where you're referring to a column, you can use a column number, okay? So we can directly say columns 2 to 11. This is something I had not pointed out earlier. I'm just taking this opportunity to point that out. Okay, let's do one more problem here. Let's rescale the age column in the Toyota Corolla data frame such that the minimum value becomes zero, the maximum value becomes one. Now, this kind of rescaling operation is quite common in data science because many times when you're working with columns with different magnitudes, you may want to bring them to the same denominator by converting them into the same range. Then they become comparable or commensurate. This is something that we will not encounter in this course, but we'll be encountering in the following course, and this is a common operation. So I wanted to bring this to your attention. Okay, so how do we do that? We've got a column. It's in fact called age underscore zero eight underscore zero four. We've got a column, and it's got a certain range of numeric values. Somehow we want to scale things in such a way that the lowest value becomes zero, highest value becomes one, and every in-between value becomes something proportionate. That's what we want to do here. So it's quite easy to do. We say we're creating a new column, so we say mutate. So mutate toy, and then we say the new column, we're going to call it age scaled, is age underscore zero eight underscore zero four, that's the name of the column, minus the minimum of that column divided by maximum minus minimum. Okay, so clearly you can understand maximum minus minimum gives us the total range, right? Let's say the minimum is 10, the maximum is 50. So the total range of values spans 40. Okay, now for a given value, all we are saying is how far away from the minimum is it? So let's say uh, the range is 10 to 50 and the value we are looking at is 40. Okay, so range is 40, minimum is 10. So now the value of 40 would be 40 minus 10, 30, divided by the whole range 40, that is 3 fourth, right? So the value 40 is 3 fourth of the way down this whole range. So it is the equivalent of 0 0.75. Okay, now suppose you're considering the minimum value here, then it's minimum minus minimum becomes zero. Right? So the row that contains the minimum value will become zero. And if you're considering the row that contains the maximum value, it's maximum minus minimum divided by maximum minus minimum. So the maximum value will get scaled to one. And every other value, as we saw in the example of 40, will get scaled to something in between. Okay, So that's how a scaling operation works. Uh, it's not as if we are going to actually manually do this. We'll be using some functions, uh, but it's interesting to know that there is this concept. Okay, so now we revisit our good old Walmart stock price uh, table. Okay, so using the file walmart.csv, create a column called price change for each day, right? So we want, and of course we are using the adjusted closing price here. So what we want to do is for every day, we want to find out the price change from the prior day. Okay, and the price change for a given day is that day's price minus the prior day's price. And of course, this could be positive or negative. So let's take an example. Okay, so here is the data frame. Adjusted close is the column. For the first row, of course, we cannot calculate the price change because we don't know the price of the prior day. Okay, there has always got to be such a first number. We don't know the thing. So for the first row, the price change is going to be NA, unknown. For the second row, the price change is its price, 37.76, minus the previous price 37, 35, and so on. Okay, now how do we actually calculate this? Well, 
Before we do that, let's take a look at names Walmart. And the names are the column names, date, open, high, low, close, volume, adjusted close. Now when you look at the adjusted close column name, it's got a space in it. Okay. Now normally your column names are not supposed to have spaces in data frames. But this one has spaces because this is a table. And a table allows you to have non-standard column names. Okay, But because it's a non-standard column name, when we use it, we have to use backticks. And when we display the table, indeed, we see that adjusted close is surrounded by backticks. Okay, So whenever we are using this column name in any operation, we have to refer to it with backticks right because it's a special column name it's non-standard you don't have to use backticks for any of these other things only for this okay so now how are we going to calculate the price changes we've already discussed in in one of the recitations we've discussed the lag function right so if you say lag adjusted close within backticks of course then you get the values of adjusted close but lagged by one time period okay so 37.35 comes in the uh, this position right and so on okay in fact it uh, you know for the second time period it's going to be 37.35 because that's the value of the first time period for the third time period the lagged value is 37.76 because that's the real value of the second time period and so on okay so once we have this we can easily calculate the price change of course for the first period the price change is na because we don't know the previous price. For the second period, the price change is 3776 minus 3735. For the third period, it is 3791 minus 3776. And for the last period, it is 3550 minus 3660. Okay. Clearly, price change can be negative. So for example, the, for the last time period, uh, at least the last one displayed here, the price actually reduced from 3660 to 3550. So the price change is going to be negative. Okay, so you would compute the price change like this. Mutate Walmart price change is adjusted close within backticks minus lag of adjusted close, right? So this is the adjusted close. This is lag of adjusted close. You subtract and of course that gives you the price change as defined. Let's move further on the same theme. So for the Walmart data, create a column named QM gain days to keep a running count of the number of days from the start on which the price increased. So it's going to look something like this. This is what we are looking for. Cumulative gain days, right? So the first day, of course, there's nothing. So the number of days in which uh, prices increased is zero. So here we saw that for the second day, the price change was 0.41. So that's a day in which the price increased. So the cumulative days is one. The next day, the price again increased. Cumulative days is 2. The next day, the price decreased. So the cumulative price increase day still remains at 2. Okay, We are not doing anything about decreases. We are only counting the number of days during which the price actually increased from the prior day. Decrease, we are not doing anything. right? So obviously, this column can only increase. It can't decrease. So it stays at 2. And here, it again increases. The price increased, became 3. Price increased, it became 4 price decreased, it remains at 4, price decreased remains at 4, decreased remains at 4, decreased again remains at 4. Okay, So this is what we are trying to do. Create a column named QM gain days, cumulative gain days, to keep a running count of the number of days from the start in which the price increased. So our strategy is going to be the following. We are first going to create a new 0, 1 column for price increase. right? Of course, we could do all of this in one step, but let's take it piece by piece. So first, we're going to create a column in which if the price increased from the prior day for a particular day, then we'll put a 1. Otherwise, we'll put a 0. As simple as that. Okay, And then we'll use the QM sum function on this column and our job will be done. Okay, That is because for every day, if the price increased on that day compared to the prior day, we'll have a 1. Otherwise, we'll have a 0. So to maintain how many days the price has increased from the start, all we have to do is to add up this particular column of zeros and ones. 
because every time the price increased we have a 1 and if the price did not increase we have a 0 so if you just add it all up then you'll get a running total of how many days up to that point has the price increased see how we can add this new column so we are saying butate Walmart because we are adding new columns and of course here we have our price change column it, because we didn't add it earlier. Earlier we just had it as part of a mutate state, mutate uh, function call, but we didn't actually change the Walmart table at all, right? So price changes, adjusted close minus lag of adjusted close, that is fine. And the new column, whether or not the price increased on that day, so I'm calling that column as is increase, okay? I could have called it as price increase, but that would sound like it is how much the price increased by. No, we just have a flag saying did the price increase or not. Okay, so that's why I'm calling it as is increase. I mean, is this an increase? Does this represent an increase? And we are using an if else function to do this. This if else function in R works exactly like the if function in Excel, right? So we are saying here if else price change greater than zero, namely this price change, if it's greater than zero, then put a one in this column otherwise put a zero in this column as simple as that right in fact I shouldn't have called it price uh, yeah if price change is greater than zero then it is an increase otherwise it's not an increase it's either the same or lower okay so that is how you compute this column just note this function okay it's a vectorized function so it's going to do this for every single item of price change because after all price change is a column it's a vector so it's going to compute this for every element of the vector and therefore is increase is a vector and that becomes a new column okay so the result is going to look like this like what is shown here okay so having done that it's a simple matter then to uh, to do a cum sum but we have to be careful because there is an na sitting in the very first row of this so if we just did cum sum is increase there will be a problem because you'll get an na so you'll have to do uh, you know remove the na Unfortunately, the cum sum function doesn't have an option to uh, get rid of NAs. Like for example, mean, you can say E's dot NA, uh, NA dot RM equals true. You can do that, right? But the cum sum function doesn't seem to have that. So what we have to do is to modify this code a little bit so that the NA doesn't appear there. The way we are going to do that is shown here. So we are saying price changes adjusted close minus lag of adjusted close. E's increases, E fails. Right, but here we are saying if it's not NA, right, is dot NA price change. Right? If price change is not NA and the price change is greater than zero, then put a one, otherwise put a zero. So in this case, if the price change happens to be NA, then it'll put a zero here. It won't actually put an NA. So when you do this, this is what you get, and of course the NA is now gone. It's a zero instead of the NA right because uh, if the price changes only if the price change is actually greater than zero we are putting a one but if it's an na then earlier we were putting an na but now we are putting a one so that's the difference between the two right so if it's an na then we take care of it like this so now with all of that done it's a simple matter to have another column now called cumulative price gain days is cum sum is increase Okay, so ease increase is here, cumulative price gain is here. Okay, so you've got the number of days on which the price increased. And of course, we are only seeing the first 10 rows. If you see all of the rows, 3,980 rows or 990 rows, you'll see all of, all of the values. Of course, you can do the same thing without an intermediate column like we had earlier. I've just rolled into cum sum the whole of the computation of the earlier column right so we are saying cum sum if else e start na price change etc zero one okay so cum we don't have this additional column that we had earlier is increase